News Scene tonight with Chuck Moore, Pam Martin, and the News Scene team. Good evening. Here's what's happening. A foreign exchange student from Tanzania attending Atlanta University was shot and killed tonight in southwest Atlanta. His name has not yet been released. News Scene's Paul Yates reports this murder, like so many others, may not be solved. This is the 173rd recorded homicide for the year in Atlanta. It happened around 7 p.m. at the corner of Chestnut Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. The victim appeared to be in the early 20s. Police say even though the young man was killed on a busy street corner, they have few leads and no suspects. Detective Sweeney, what happened here? We really don't know. The man was walking down the street. Uh, people heard gunshots. The man lays dead. Have you been able to get anybody to tell you what happened here? Surely someone saw it out in the middle of the street at 7 o'clock at night. I'm sure they did, but nobody wants to tell us anything. Is that something you're running into more often? That's why we have so many open homicides this year. People just won't talk to you? That's correct. They just refuse to. They don't want to get involved. I'm sure, you know, like you said, there has to be at least five or six people who are eyewitness to the incident. And they, they will not come forth and tell us what happened. These people have got to live in this community. They've got to live among it. If they want to live with it, you know, it's their option. We can only do what we can, and that's working on information that people relate to us. And we can't do that without the information coming in. Homicide victim number 173 was shot once with a pistol. Paul Yates, 5 New Scene. A southeast Atlanta man was shot less than an hour ago when he allegedly entered his former wife's apartment and started an argument. The resident manager of the apartments, located at 600 Arnold Street, rushed to one of the apartments when he heard a woman screaming. When the manager came to the door, he said he saw the man beating his wife. The manager asked him to stop, and the man reached for a weapon. The manager shot the man in the leg. Police chased the man around a six-block area before arresting him. He's identified as James Hillary. A 38-year-old Atlanta man was sentenced to death today for the killing of a Cobb County convenience store manager last June. Van Roosevelt Solomon was convicted in Cobb Superior Court last night. 27-year-old Wilbur May is also charged in the murder. He has not yet gone to trial. The murder trial of a state prison inmate ended in a mistrial today. The jury deliberated for two days before giving up. 29-year-old James Johnson III was the third of six inmates tried as the result of a riot at Reedsville Prison in July of last year. He was charged in the stabbing death of a guard. Pam. As a result of our special series, Unfair at Any Speed, a motorist tonight had his speeding ticket dismissed, and New Scene's Barbara Nevins was on the scene. On July 23rd, Eugene Doyle was given a speeding ticket. The state trooper who stopped him tracked Doyle's car with radar. We had been traveling with that officer and found that he failed to follow state patrol procedure and state law. He did not calibrate his radar unit with a tuning fork. In our series, Radar Unfair at Any Speed, radar critic Rod Dornsythe demonstrated how a tuning fork is used to make sure that the radar unit is functioning properly. Tonight, the Cobb County solicitor recommended Doyle's case be dismissed. In this case, I talked to the trooper, Trooper Vaughn, excellent guy, a tremendous officer, and he advised me that he did not use a tuning fork, and he asked me to, uh, to recommend the case be dismissed. I think that this case is obvious. There has to be some improvements in the method that they use, and I'm just glad that the case has ended the way it has. This was a personal victory for Eugene Doyle, but the implications may be greater than personal victories. The Cobb County solicitor says he intends to ask all of his assistants to question traffic officers when they come to court as to whether or not they have used tuning forks. Barbara Nevins, 5 News Scene in Cobb County. President Carter called a sudden meeting of the National Security Council tonight. The call came after Secretary of State Vance and Soviet Foreign Minister Gromyko announced that there would be no further discussions about those Soviet troops in Cuba. Vance and Gromyko met for three hours today, but again reported no progress on that issue. There's no word about what action Carter might be contemplating. Clayton County voters have approved a Freeport proposal. That story's next when News Scene resumes.
jar and get regular or diet Pepsi Cola, Mountain Dew, or Sun Kissed Orange. Liter bottle, 19 cents plus deposit. Country Pride Grade A baking heads, 39 cents a pound. Craft orange juice, half gallon size, 99 cents at Big Star. And ground beef, three pound package or larger, $1.28 a pound. Win up to $5,000 playing instant Vegas bingo. Free game tickets at Big Star. We are all the things you are, all the looks of you. There's a complete men's store at Saks Fifth Avenue that really does understand when pleasure is pleasure and business is business, and that sometimes the two do meet, which is where we come in, with all the clothing and all the style that lets you be all the men you are. We are all the things you are at Saks Fifth Avenue. On the terrifying smash bestseller, The Legacy, Jason Mount Olive is a man with many friends. To you, I bequeath my power, my knowledge, and my estate. Now they've been reunited for one last time. <laughs> Each to receive one last gift. The legacy. A birthright of living death. Rated R. Opens tomorrow at a theater near you. You know why Roman Meal bakers like their work? They like the smell when all that bread's in the oven. And they like the idea that they're baking something special. But there's more to Roman meal than good baking. It's what Roman meal's made with. A unique blend of select grains, rich flour, honey, ingredients that make a delicious light brown bread with natural whole grain goodness. I like that. And this Roman meal bakery thought you'd like to know. Voters in Clayton County today approved the Freeport Amendment. Freeport allows government to exempt certain goods from taxation and is designed to encourage the development of industry. Clayton County was the only metro Atlanta county that had not passed the measure. There was much apprehension. Uh, just not knowing exactly what would happen did pose a problem for the electorate here. How fast is the Jonesboro area here in Clayton County growing? It's growing very rapidly. Uh, Clayton County has approximately 145,000 at this time. So as a result of the passage of the Freeport issue here today, do you foresee possibly new industry coming into the area? I would certainly hope so. Of the more than 48,000 registered voters in Clayton County, only a little more than 2,000 turned out for today's election. There was a tragic bus wreck in Venezuela today. Forty people were killed, an unknown number injured, when a bus slammed into a large truck and two other cars. In Rabin County, Georgia this morning, a school bus overturned on Highway 441. Thirty-one students and the bus driver had to go to the hospital. Twelve of them will have to spend the night. None, though, was seriously injured. Pam? The people who make sure that school children in DeKalb County get across the street safely are back in the news again. Phil Flynn has the latest on the controversy over who should pay the crossing guards in that county. The question. DeKalb County Commission Chairman Walt Russell wants the state Supreme Court to decide who should pay school crossing guards. In a suit brought by Russell earlier, the State Court of Appeals ruled the commission and not the Board of Education is responsible, a decision Russell didn't care for. Well, a definitive final ruling on this particular question so that future boards of education and commissioners can base upon that decision not get fussed again about who's going to pay what to whom, see. And that's the main reason for going up there, the only reason, really. A school board is, is commissioned to tax and collect funds for educational purposes and expend those funds for no other reason. A uh, school crossing guard uh, is an individual who is hired basically uh, to control traffic and ensure safety on streets adjacent to schools. The county spends about $200,000 a year paying the 130 crossing guards, and those guards make anywhere from $33 to $35 a week, tops. And while the due process of law is taking its time in this controversy between the DeKalb County Commission and the DeKalb County School Board, there are those things that will not change. School crossing guards will continue to get paid and will continue to do their jobs. And sometimes those jobs can be downright scary. And the school children will get safely across the streets so they can go to school every morning, whether they like it or not, and return home every afternoon. But there will be winners and losers in this governmental squabble. The winners, the attorneys who take the case to high court. The losers, the DeKalb County taxpayer, who in the long run will pay those attorneys' fees. Phil Flynn, 5 News Scene. 
A controversial Atlanta musical played a command performance before a judge tonight. We'll have that story, plus tonight's troubleshooter report when News Scene returns. A car that's long on gas mileage, that's luxurious and long on gas mileage, that's sporty and long on gas mileage, that's economical and long on gas mileage, you get all this in the great Toyota lineup at Hyde Toyota. I'm Harold Hyde, and at Hyde Toyota, you can find the Toyota you want, equipped the way you want it. So visit Hyde Toyota in Mableton and choose from our great Toyota lineup. Hyde Toyota will work with you. Depend on it. When you were little, breakfast was a special way to start the day. Every morning, Mom would greet you with a smile and a hot, delicious breakfast. That's why every morning, Steak and Shake says... Good morning! With a piping hot breakfast. Eggs prepared your favorite way. Crisp bacon, sausage, chilled orange juice, hot toast, hash browns, and pancakes so light they melt in your mouth. So join us in the morning for a breakfast like Mom would make. And make today a special day at Steak and Shake. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's my smartest fashion buy for fall? Fashion coordinates from Davison's, of course. This weekend, save 20% on blazers, blouses, and pants, and on jackets and skirts in camel or navy. Save 30% on crepe machine blouses, too, and lots of style and new fall colors. Come save on your favorite fashions for fall during sales manager's days at Davison's. Man has always worked long and hard to make his land produce. Now a TRW electronic system helps turn space signals into clear pictures of the Earth that show us the extent of flood damage, where hidden resources are, how crops are doing, how to make the land we work so hard even more productive all over the world. There was a special performance of the controversial play Scarlet Fever tonight in Atlanta. News Scene's Paul Yates says the show was put on for the benefit of one person. That person is federal judge Orinda Evans. She is in the process of deciding whether Scarlet Fever violates the copyright of Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind. Evans and a crowd of lawyers, federal court employees, and other judges went to Showcase Cabaret in Ansley Mall to see the show. The producers of Scarlet Fever call it a comic retelling of a southern legend, a satire of an institution. But attorneys for the Mitchell estate, the MGM Film Studio, and Macmillan Publishing Company claim Scarlet Fever is a copyright infringement. The judge has issued a temporary restraining order barring production and advertising of the play. She will view the movie version of Gone with the Wind tomorrow. Lawyers for Showcase Cabaret believe this case may set a precedent in the interpretation of the federal copyright statute that went into effect in 1978. Judge Evans will hold a hearing on Monday, and a decision may be issued then on whether Scarlet Fever will be allowed on stage. Paul Yates, 5 News Scene. President Carter has signed into law the bill setting up a commission to administer the Panama Canal Zone for the next 20 years until it's turned over to Panama in the year 2000. The House today sent President Carter a bill he has long been waiting for. It establishes a separate cabinet-level Department of Education. The Senate has voted to freeze congressional salaries for another year. The action came as the Senate continued funding for several government agencies whose regular appropriations are stalled in Congress. Pam? When a Rome, Georgia couple's motorhome was repossessed by mistake, they called troubleshooter Paul Reynolds for help. Earl and Evelyn Hare are looking through the fence that was the Kenny Kitson Marine, an RV shop out here on North Four Lane in Tom County. As you can see, nothing here. Everything's gone. Uh, the problem is, they left their expensive motorhome here on consignment to be sold. When the repo man came, took their motorhome along with everything else, and they can't get it back. The owner of this place is Skip Country, and uh, the, uh, all of the equipment was impounded by the court. Including your motorhome? Including my motorhome, right. But you only had it on consignment. That's correct. That was a verbal consignment. There was no claims against it whatsoever. The Hayer's motorhome is safe, legally impounded at a nearby shop. Attorneys for the Borg Warner people uh, who repoed the stock from Kenny Kitson's shop 
say they've now received the proof of ownership sent in by Mr. Hayer. He'll get his motorhome back soon, as soon as Judge Charles Moy approves the paperwork. Well, as the hair has pointed out, it sure can hurt when you take your $25,000 motorhome to a place to have it sold, and then everything on the stock is repoed, and you're left holding the bag. Glad things worked out for them. Got a call? 876-H-E-L-P. Let me hear from you. If I can help you, I will if I possibly can. Harmon Wages is here with the Thursday night sports, including Falcons coach Lehman Bennett talking about Sunday's game with the Redskins, and a look at the Atlanta Hawks playing the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight in St. Petersburg. Superstar Sports is next as news scene moves along. Yes, every penny does count when you shop Big Apple and Food Giant. The meat specialists present U.S. Choice Corn-Fed Heavy Western Round Steak, only $1.47 a pound. Lennox Park, 2% milk, $1.79 a gallon. Maxwell House Coffee, pound bag, $2.78. From the produce specialists, U.S. number one genuine russet baking potatoes, 10-pound bag, just 89 cents. You might be the next big winner in touchdown dollars. Brand new game each week at Big Apple and Food Giant. This weekend is your last chance to get a history-making deal at Dodge World. Dodge World goes all out to give you the year's best deal. Hi, I'm John Perez, president of Dodge World. And this weekend is your last chance to make the deal of a lifetime. Save up to $2,000 plus $400 from Chrysler. The lowest prices in our history are waiting for you this weekend. Come on out. Dodge World, 740 Holcomb Bridge Road, number one in the southeast with your last chance to save thousands this weekend. Don't miss it. My name is H.G. Wells. I came here in a time machine of my own construction. I'm pursuing Jack the Ripper, who escaped into the future in my machine. A brilliant scientist, a criminal genius, a delightful romance, and a daring chase across time. The most exciting, mysterious, and challenging dimension of all. Time After Time, rated PG. Starts tomorrow at these fine theaters. Check newspaper for showtime. This Saturday only, all patterns at Cloth World are half price. 50% off every pattern in stock. No exception. Saturday only at Cloth World. Several important baseball games were supposed to be played tonight, but it didn't work out that way, Harmon. This is true. As I mentioned, at 6 o'clock tonight, double header with the Montreal Expos was rained out. It will be made up on Monday here in Atlanta if the games are necessary. Now, there is a chance they won't really matter. We'll go to the scoreboard. It goes like this. Now, Montreal Atlanta rained out. The Expos have five games to go. They're one game back with the Pirates, who lost to St. Louis 9-5. to The Pirates have three games to go. Now, San Diego-Cincinnati was rained out with San Diego leading 2-0. It doesn't really matter for Cincinnati because Houston's two and a half up. Should make it three. Cincinnati is two and a half up. Excuse me, okay. One other game, Los Angeles-San Francisco. Late game, American League. The Red Sox beat the Blue Jays 6-5. to The Yankees beat Cleveland. Is tied in the seventh in Milwaukee, 6 to 6, Seattle, Milwaukee. The White Sox beat Minnesota 4 to 2, and Texas beat Oakland 4 to 3. By the way, Baltimore and California, who did not play, have both won their division. Now, guess who won their third straight game and remains undefeated in exhibition play? The Atlanta Hawks. They win tonight by the score of 128 to 115. Young players playing tonight. This is Earl Pelham coming in for the tip in dunk. Now, Terry Furlow misses, but another rookie named T.J. Robinson will tip this one in. Furlow misses, and here's T.J. Then there's old reliable Tom McMillan, who goes four for four with this shot right here. At one time, he was 12 of 12 field goals in the last two games. Soon after that, he made it five of five in the game tonight. As I said, final score, 128 to 115. Atlanta Hawks winning. Wouldn't be complete without a bomb from little Charlie Chris, right? Final score, 128-115. Chris Everett Lloyd, seated second in the Davidson's Tennis Classic, was beaten this afternoon by Wendy Turnbull in three sets, 6-4, 1-6, And tonight, U.S. Open champion Tracy Austin in the near court is still playing. She was defeated in the first set by Diane Fromhol, 7-6, 7-3 tiebreaker. Tracy Austin there hitting the ball, won the second set, 6-2, and is now leading in the third set, 4-2. Perhaps a final score before the show is over. Other scores, fifth seeded Yvonne Gulagong Cauley defeated Maurice Kruger, 6-1, 6-2, and Martina Navratilova defeated Virginia Wade, 6-4, and 6-1. That tournament will go on all the way through Sunday. Tracy Austin. 
Now, Sunday's game at the stadium between the Falcons and the Washington Redskins is sold out. It will be on TV right here, Channel 5, 1 o'clock. It's a big game. It's a big game not just for the present, but in looking down the road towards the playoffs, it could be a factor. Well, Harmon, the uh, important thing, of course, is to win the ball game, make us 3-2 and two rather than 2-3, uh, uh, and three. and I'm sure they're thinking they would much rather be 4-1 uh, and one rather than 3-2. Uh, uh, and two. And, of course, on down the road, it could enter into the playoff picture. I don't think any of us has thought about it that much as far as the playoff is concerned. But it, uh, one of the uh, first tiebreakers, of course, is whether or not uh, or who won the game when you go head-to-head -head in uh, competition in the regular season. So from that standpoint, we'd very definitely like to win the ball game. Uh, we feel like the playoff picture will, however, take care of itself if we're able to go ahead and win enough games down the road. But this is an important game for us and one that we'd like very much to win your injury situation for the game well it's not uh good we injured uh, had uh, mike lewis get injured in yesterday's practice and whether or not he'll be able to play in the game right now only time will tell his uh, knee his knee yes he got a, a strained knee wilson fomwina will be back uh, from minor knee surgery and and uh, look for him to play uh, quite a bit in the ball game edgar fields is also nursing a minor knee injury but i uh, feel like he will be back uh, Outside of that, we've got a few bumps and bruises, but we expect them all to play. Van Nold is coming back. Uh, he missed one day of practice this week. He'll be back and be able to play in the game, as will uh, everyone else. In high school football tonight, Riverdale beat Heritage 1-0. That's because of penetration. And the Atlanta Flames were beaten by the New York Islanders 3-0 in New York. Same two teams tomorrow night at the Omni. All right. Thank you, Herman. Now it's time for the editorial. Here's Vice President and General Manager Paul Raymond. It's understandable, but we think it's a matter of concern that two important offices are going to be filled Tuesday, and very few citizens are aware of it. It's understandable because all the attention in Tuesday's voting has been on the local option sales tax. And it's normal, if not right, that unless there are unusual circumstances, off-season elections get little notice. Atlanta city voters will elect a city council member to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Panky Bradley. Five candidates are running. In alphabetical order, they are Sherman Barge, Beverly Bates, Ina Evans, Comer Hawkins, and Elaine Wiggins Lester. Fulton and Atlanta voters will elect a state representative to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Gerald Horton. The eight candidates alphabetically are R.E. Bob Brown, R.K. Bobby Brown, Clinton DeVoe, Betty Lowe, Herb Mabry, Julius McAnders, Ben O'Callaghan, and John Stembler. For Atlanta and Fulton County residents, the decisions are important. The people elected will help make your laws and spend your money. In this election, one vote, your vote, can make a powerful difference. Send us your opinion, Box 4207, Atlanta. Guy Sharp is standing by to show us where the showers are. He has color radar weather next as news scene continues. Never strip your furniture because stripping takes it off. Takes it all off. The strong chemicals removes all of your wood's character along with the finish. Here I'm using my furniture refinisher. It dissolves the old finish but keeps the glow and richness that makes furniture valuable. So look around your house. Inside of every beat up piece of furniture, there's a beautiful piece trying to get out. Homer Formby, no one knows wood as good. Formby's products available at these and other fine home care stores. They are billions of years older than we are and infinitely more intelligent. We have sought them out with signals in the sky. If they are fearful beings, it is too late to turn back. They know we are here. They know we are here. Mel Ferrer, we are Glenn here. Ford, they John Houston, we Shelley Winters. The Visitor, rated R. The Visitors start Friday at these theaters. Whoa, Nelly. Try a handful of them Pepperidge Farm cookies. Got 36 kinds. Old fashioned ones like Ginger Man cookies and brownie chocolate nut cookies. Fancy ones like Milano cookies made with sweet chocolate and no artificial preservatives. Here. Fellas, I said a handful. Try Pepperidge Farm cookies. Kids never could resist them. Neither can grown-ups. 
because Pepperidge Farm remembers. Atlanta offers for me almost everything in the way of nightlife, entertainment, the cultural advantages are all here. Being an account executive at one of Atlanta's leading advertising agencies is always challenging and always exciting. Atlantans are active, they're healthy, they're young, they're vibrant, and I belong. Ellen Freely, part of the new Atlanta. I belong to the new Atlanta. Hey, a fit night out for man or beast, and guy fits in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I came out a little bit better on that one than I usually do. Murky, muggy, cloudy, soupy, soppy, you put the adjectives in, whatever you say, that's it. We've been right around the same temperature all day, and we've had enough rain to satisfy us. All right, let's take a look at the color radar, because it will tell you that it is still cloudy outside, and there is a heavy fog building up. Driving ain't the best. We're going to have more rain tonight, scattered showers tomorrow, take a break on Sunday probably, and then come back with more rain the first of the week. It is presently 69 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius after a 71 high, a 67 low. It is rainy and foggy outside. Humidity 93%, barometer steady 30.01 inches with an easterly wind at 14. A little bit better than one and a third inches. We're now way ahead for the year and one and a quarter inches ahead for the month. Our pollution was good. It ought to be. Mother Nature just washed it down the curb. Take a look at the satellite map. That's where it's all at, right there in the center of your screen. The southeastern area is blocked in with a low-pressure cell in northern Florida, south Georgia. Frontal systems going both directions. Easterly a warm front, southerly a cold front. What you guess we got tomorrow? Hmm. Pretty much the same thing. A little bit of a variance in the weather, though. Another system building up in the upper Mississippi Valley is going to trigger showers and thunder showers over the Plain States, the Mississippi Valley area, on up into the lakes. We're still stuck with our same old system. We're going to have a cloudy day tomorrow, chance of showers in the afternoon and evening. Probably will extend on into Saturday with a few breaks in the clouds Saturday and Sunday. Then the rain comes back again Monday and Tuesday as this system begins to move in. After this one, sashays on to the north. Mercy. All right, take a look at these cities. You may want to go there. Well, there's a couple of them that I wouldn't mind at all. Sunshine, dry conditions. Let's go. Right now, our highs in Georgia range from the upper six, 60s to 83 at Valdosta with a lot of rain, but most of the rain was in the Savannah area where street flooding was very prominent. Here's the forecast for Atlanta and vicinity. Cloudy with rains easing up a little bit tonight and about a 50% possibility of showers tomorrow, diminishing to 30% Saturday. Low in the morning, 65, the high tomorrow, 73. Low the next morning, 65, the high the next day, 78. I don't have any more partly cloudy, so I had to put sun up there for Monday and Tuesday, but I got news for you, it's going to rain Monday and Tuesday. Not again. <laughs> yeah, course. so don't look at the visual you just saw. Right. Just take my word for it. We've got more rain coming in. All righty. Bye. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Got a story for you. A Belgian motorist picked up a rather lucky hitchhiker the other day. It seems that the driver was pulled over for speeding and the police officer gave him a ticket. Well, the driver was furious, but the hitchhiker wasn't concerned. He said, don't worry, you won't have a ticket, and then he promptly pulled out the officer's ticket book. The hitchhiker had a nice little explanation. He said, I just left jail, and I'm a pickpocket. <laughs> and a pretty good one at that. And a good one. <laughs> That's what's happening. Stay tuned for Maude for the new scene team on Chuck Moore. Good night. <laughs> Portions of New Scene have been brought to you tonight by Big Star Food Stores.